All right, so we are looking at first majestic silver in the monthly time frame. And this is the same same picture we've been seeing today in uh, both Avino and Fortuna silver. So basically we have price uh, poised for a breakout, but that, that breakout hasn't occurred yet. And so it's good time to be doing our research uh, and analysis of our potential investments for the next up leg while we still have some time to act. And so um, we have this downtrending. This is a modified shift pitchfork. Clearly, we got price bumping up into resistance at that upper median line. Um, now we have an uptrending in the more recent action. We've got this uptrending Andrews pitchfork uh, where price has pushed up above the uh, median line of that fork. Um, but of course, we need to see price um, break above, you know, decisively above and then establish it as support. And so. Um, yeah, price just kind of kind of waiting there, gathering energy. Um, and of course, the bullish perspective is that we're going to break higher from here. And our next price target, and I'm basing it on this, uh, some expecting resistance from this prior high, and uh, thinking that that's going to kick in. You know, that's yeah, I call it 17.75 up to 18 you know so if we wanted to show that um, I kind of like to draw uh, support and resistance uh, zones as rectangulars like that uh, to show that it is a zone and not just a straight line and so anyway uh, point being that um, if first majestic can make the breakout through this resistance level our next target comes up here in the $18 range. Um, bullish volume pattern, we've got uh, volume increasing in the direction of the trend and then volume pulling back when uh, price does a correction. So that's exactly what we want to see in an uptrend for volume. Momentum and energy is high, MACD, Full mode, both indicators above zero and on a currently on a buy signal. Um, that's it for the chart. Let's talk a little bit about the company. And so um, this is uh, First Majestic's corporate presentation. And I just a couple of things that that um, high, uh, highlighting the things that catch my attention. And so um, this is pointing out that the silver industry has been operating in a deficit for the last decade. And so that means we're using more silver than we produce. And so potential, potential, um, um, not so much potential for a shortage, but a potential that the price will uh, rise in response to diminishing supply, increasing demand. Um, of course, this is nothing new. This has always been true. It's a fundamental property of silver. It's reflective and it's a conductor. It's one of the best conductors of electricity. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And this is always, this has been an interesting uh, factoid to me for a long time. So we talk about when we when we focus on the silver to gold ratio from monetary perspective, we say that historically the ratio has been 15 to 1, 16 to 1, something like that. Um, and that's all well and good. That's about the ratio at which the two metals show up in the ground. But the reality at the mine site, <laughs> for a number of reasons, is that we mine at a ratio of about 8 to 1. And so if you're basing any of your analysis on uh, potential silver prices um, and the silver to gold ratio, you might 
look at what uh, 8 to 1 looks like as a target instead of 15 to 1. So just something to consider. Um, and this uh, this slide, they're pointing out that uh, the the green requires silver. Whether you talk about solar panels, um, electric cars, um, high energy trams, uh, you know, electromagnetic trams, etc. It all takes silver. And so, with the green ne green New Deal and the Democrats taking power, uh, potential for demand, the silver demand to increase dramatically. Uh, let's see if we pop down here to slide nine. Um, this shows where their assets are. Um, San, San Dimas, that's their newest and biggest mine. It's a low cost, large production. Uh, the company's president, Keith Newmeyer, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, he says they're going to be mining from that. Somebody will be mining from Sand Moss for the next hundred years. <laughs> it's just, um, you know, Mexico's prolific for uh, silver production and, and um, you know, evidently this is a big deposit. So, uh, let's see, slide 14. 14, yeah, San Dimas, uh, low cost, large production. Um, so seven to eight bucks an ounce, 822 uh, for what is that? All in sustaining cost. And so this is the most conservative number that we can use as investors for the cost to produce an ounce of whatever, whether we're talking about gold or silver. Um, and so in this case, we have an AISC of 7 to 8, 8 22, which is very low cost. Um, large production, 6 million ounces a year. That's a lot of, uh, <laughs> that's a lot of silver in the big scheme of things. Um, Let's see, one more slide, which we've already said it. Sorry for popping around like this, folks. Uh, production by mine. And so you can we can see that uh, San Dimas, um, that really is, that's where the bulk of uh, First, First Majestic's production is coming from at this point. And with the the, the next substantial chunk of production from Santa Elena. And, and interesting, um, I'm going to back up a couple of slides. So notice that, uh, what is that, 26, 36, 41, that, that's, they're showing 100% of their production from three mines. And yet if we go back to do, 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 slide nine, uh, notice that the company has eight assets. And so um, we currently have uh, one of them, um, production is suspended. We've got a couple that were past, produ past producers, but have um, uh, First Majestic is choosing to no longer uh, produce from these mines. Um, and anyway, as investors, we just need to be aware that they have some other assets in the portfolio. Um, and some of these assets have costs associated with them, um, reclamation costs, carrying costs. Um, and so, you know, the books aren't clean, but um, that's just something to keep in mind, not, not a major factor. That's all I got to say on First Majestic. Um, and again, key idea, we're basically sitting here, we're poised for a breakout, but the breakout ha hasn't happened yet. Folks, um, enjoy the New Year holidays, which are just around the corner. See ya.